Lashadra Cox has taught biology for six years. This year, she's added an AP biology class. The AP text that we use, it's a college level book that you can use to study in med school and pass the MCAT with. And so I try to encourage them that you'll get it. It's a struggle, but it's okay. We're both in this together. While pushing her students to a higher level, she's giving them additional tools and supports. I give them a lot of resources that they can use just so they don't have one particular way of learning something. I like to use pictures, videos, whatever will help them to retain the information. For years, researchers have been studying a practice known as dual coding, and it's a matter of making sure text and visuals combine in a way that supports student understanding. Visual examples are a tool in every teacher's kit, of course, but what type of visuals work best? What is it about combining a picture with text that helps students learn? We tend to learn best when we combine multiple modalities together. Dual coding is about combining images or visual representations with words. When used well, combining those can provide two ways of remembering the information for the students. Backing up a second, what do we mean by used well? Teachers can intentionally bring the visual representations into their teaching, actually slowing down and identifying what components of the visual representation you know, are represented within the words. If we're talking about Pavlov's dogs, right? You know, conditioned stimulus, unconditioned stimulus. A distracting picture could just be a picture of a dog. Just adding a picture isn't proven to help when the picture doesn't explain the concept. A better diagram might be something where you're showing a dog with a little bell and then you're showing dog with food and it's all these different components of classical conditioning. Now you have a visual representation of what classical conditioning might look like and that integrates really well. So that's the key. Teachers must be mindful that the visuals reinforce the student's understanding of the topic and do not include distractions. The goal is to create those two paths for remembering the same information later on. This video is kind of dual coding in the sense that you can see me and I'm you know, verbally or auditorily talking about the information, um, but just seeing me doesn't necessarily mean that it's a good visual, right? Unless somehow my face is helpful in reminding you what dual coding is. Point taken. So it's really just about taking those two different representations of how we might be presented with information, an additional way of thinking about it. When the one student drew the picture of the chromosome and was mapping the genes and marked it all off, it wasn't just the picture up there. It was going from the picture and then describing kind of each component of it and making the connection between the verbal representation and the visual representation. This combines another evidence-based strategy, retrieval practice, with the visuals. Students can do this by filling in the missing half of the picture and text pair, like when you give them an unlabeled diagram and have the student provide the label. Now they're integrating the verbal information themselves. It could go the other way too. You could give the students verbal materials and have them produce or sort of sketch out a visual representation on their own. So really it's helpful. better when they have to produce the visual rather than using the visual that's already made and they have to figure it out. Ultimately, having them being able to produce it themselves would be more beneficial, but if they're not there yet, if they just stare at a blank sheet of paper, they're not there yet, and so of course that's not gonna be helpful. In those cases, teachers should make simple visuals to help students understand the ideas, making sure that the concepts in the visuals speak to the concepts in the text without a lot of additional distractions. What's key is not to confuse dual coding with learning styles. Some teachers add visuals as a part of an appeal to students who are so-called visual learners, but the idea of learning styles isn't supported by evidence. Learning styles would involve diagnosing students and saying, okay, you are a visual learner, but you are a verbal learner and I've diagnosed you as such, and so I'm gonna give you a different set of materials. It involves labeling the students and can actually lead them to sort of feel like, okay, if I can only learn in this one way, 
I can't learn in this other way. And that labeling can lead students to avoid or dismiss activities or subjects that don't line up with their perceived learning style. Another teacher at the school, Lauren Mueller, also experimented with dual coding. As a language arts teacher, the applications were less obvious, and she didn't want to have kids draw pictures of characters or scenes, which wouldn't help robust forms of learning. Again, distracting details can make students learn less. So Lauren used a variation of the dual coding approach. One way that I've been using it this past semester is in creating graphic organizers when I'm teaching writing. Given what Lauren knew of the science, she gave students scaffolded organizers to account for prior knowledge. She also reduced the details in the graphic organizers to make sure students understood key concepts without getting sidetracked. It was really fascinating as I was walking around to see who sketched out a graphic organizer just like I've been giving them, who didn't do anything at all, and who also came up with their own way to organize information in a way that made sense to them. It's fun to see kids who maybe struggle in other areas be like, yes, let me tell you what I think. Let me take my brain and pour it out onto paper. It's getting them out of that comfort zone of leaning on the teacher to provide you the information. I can get you there, but I can't make you drink, you know? <laughs> Knowing the evidence behind dual coding is another resource for teachers. It helps them sharpen their tools and test the science behind it in the real world. It has not taken much for me to implement dual coding. And that is so refreshing as a teacher. Like it's taking what I'm already doing and it's just making it like a little bit better and giving some language to it. And it's like, that's what I'm here for <laughs> as a teacher. In the end, for Lashadra, the dual coding research was not a new strategy. Instead, the knowledge of the science made her more deliberate about how exactly she combined visuals and text in ways that helped students. Dual coding works. It, it's been proven that it works if you use a strategy the right way and you're using it intentionally.